big news of the day is that the Atlanta Hawks finally pulled the trigger on a much talked about, much rumored trade with the San Antonio Spurs sending Danilo Gallinari three first round picks and a 2026 pick swap um, for DeJounte Murray. The Spurs guard had a breakout year this season. Uh, he helped lead the team to the playing games. He was an all-star for the first time in his career. He's only 26 or 25, I think, actually. He has two years left on his current deal, which is a super bargain contract in the league. And really, he was he was one of the cornerstones for the Spurs team, and he helped navigate them from a time where they lost their big three, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, Tim Duncan. He was the last player to play with those guys that was still on the roster. So it truly is an end of an era for that Spurs team. Um, Greg Popovich supposedly signed off as well and is on board with the move. So that kind of suggests that he's going to be involved with the team um, this season, maybe past this season. Uh, it was kind of originally when I heard this trade and when I heard that this was the, the offer they were seriously considering, I thought this was more to do with like, stocking the the chest with assets for a new coach to come in and take over once pop retired but by the sound of it it was something that they really like got his approval on and i mean i'm sure that organization gets his approval on everything with how long he's been there but it's interesting so i'm curious to see if that means you know maybe he's not um his retirement may not be as imminent as we were thinking uh so for the spurs this is kind of a, we liked what we got and what we saw from Joshua Primo, Trey Jones, who will take over probably the lead guard roles uh, in some type of split. Patty Mills just opted out of his uh, his contract in Brooklyn. Could always be a threat to go back home. Uh, not home, home's Australia, but San Antonio. <laughs> and then Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, a lot of those players. That young Spurs roster has really been... Um, really been you know surprising to a lot of teams and i think this is probably an instance where they're thinking that they can um probably start planning to try to get victor Wimbanyama, aka victor von doom in the upcoming 2023 draft um they had been a major rumored player for deandre Ayton. i think that's probably out at this point if DeJounte Murray at 25 is too old to be a part of your rebuild, it's clear that they're probably looking to get a Wimbanyama or someone that can anchor those guards and forwards for years to come. So they're going to just build up as many assets as they can, um, try to find minutes for those young players, and go from there really and kind of just see what they have at the end of the season and hope that you know it, it falls their way. Um, obviously, the more exciting part of this trade is DeJounte Murray going to Atlanta. Uh, that's the more exciting thing to think about. That's where we're going to get the most um, immediate results. And I don't know. I keep going back and forth on how I feel about this because I really like DeJounte Murray. I think he was an underrated guard for the last couple of years. I think the fact that he consistently gets better every year is something that, you know, most teams would covet. And I, I'm sure it's, it's part how well the Spurs system seems to to help with development, but it's also DeJounte Murray himself having that work ethic and putting in the time to get better. He went from, you know, the backup point guard to an all-star running the offense. The Spurs offense started and ended with him most nights. So to see him going to pair with an offensive force like Trey Young is just such an interesting thing. To me, it kind of says that Travis Schlank is betting that DeJounte Murray's benefits on things like perimeter defense, um, taking playmaking responsibilities off of Trey for extended periods of time, they think that that's going to outweigh things like needing the ball in his hands to create and being a, a really good pass-first point guard because Trey Young is one of the best passers in the league, and to ask him to come off ball more and give up some of those playmaking duties is kind of hindering what he does best. He's a really, you know, obviously the shooting, the scoring is much talked about, the free throws, all of that. But to me, his passing is the is the best part of his game. The, the attention he draws from teams when he has the ball in his hands creates just these great easy looks for a lot of guys. And it also concerns me that... Um, 
John Collins doesn't play guard and wants a trade and has wanted a trade for like two years because of Trey Young's perceived lack of passing. Um, I think that's probably got more to do with like him stepping across half court and heaving a shot without taking the time to look and survey and see what the court looks like um, for their set. But I'm really curious to see how this is going to work out because DeJounte does cover a lot of that, a lot of those holes in Trey's game. He's going to pick up a lot of slack defensively in ways that guys like Lou Williams just weren't able to do alongside Trey. So that right there makes this trade worth it. Um, the three firsts is a lot to give up. One is a 2023 first via Charlotte, and then 2025 and 27 first round picks that belong to the Hawks. Um, the huge thing about those 25 and 27 picks is they are unprotected, which makes them that much more valuable, even if the Hawks are, you know, a perennial Eastern Conference contender. Even if their runs are going, you know, deeper into the playoffs, they're, those unprotected first round picks are, are still pretty rare to get these days. So I can see why the Spurs did it for the Hawks. It's a lot of, of, um, a lot of assets to give up, but you're betting that this is what has been missing. Uh, apparently, DeJounte and Trey are good friends, which may make it easier for them to coexist as well on the court, hopefully. But really, above all else, I'm just really curious to see what this is going to look like from a basketball standpoint. So Gallinari's gone. They're probably going to trade John Collins as well. I can't imagine them keeping him after how often his name has come up in rumored requests and even this trade for DeJounte Murray. Um, so I'm really curious to see what that's going to look like because this was a team that had a lot of um, a lot of depth, a lot of overlap at a lot of positions. And now they've traded Cam Reddish. They just traded Danilo Gallinari. John Collins is probably gone. They're suddenly going to be looking a little smaller in their rotations if they're running Trey, DeJounte, and, and Bogdanovich with, you know, Capella or um, Okongwu at center. Like, who knows? But this is a team that, you know, defense hasn't been their strong point at all, really, the last couple of years, as they've kind of reinvented themselves around Trey Young. And it's going to be putting a lot on DeJounte Murray as far as helping that perimeter defense goes. So I'll be really curious to see what this team is going to look like. I understand why they did it. This is one of those things where, you know, you can go get a young player on a good deal to help pair with your superstar. And, you know, the previous relationship between the two just kind of makes it that much better. It makes it that much easier to pull the trigger because you don't hopefully have to worry about those chemistry issues. Um, for the Spurs, too, it's just it's sad to see him go because he felt like such a quintessential Spur. And that's just to say he, you know, he just plays hard. He never took a playoff. It seemed like he was committed to getting better. And it was genuinely cool to see him organically develop like that. Like, to bridge the gap between the big three era and this new era of younger players, he has just consistently, you know, gotten better. And that's that's a testament to the Spurs organization, testament to him. And I think it, it sets him up to be in a really nice spot in Atlanta as long as the things, as long as things break accordingly for that team. Um, I mean, we'll see. So, free agency starts Thursday. I'm sure we'll get all sorts of reports. I will probably hop on at some point and try to do um, some type of recap, depending on the news that we get. So, in the meantime, let me know your thoughts on uh, this trade, how you think this trade shook out, um, who you think wins, if you think, you know, that that backcourt is going to be a good fit. I saw someone already say, like, is this the best backcourt in the NBA? Let's let's see what they look like first uh, before we start anointing that. Um we'll see about that let's leave that be for for at least the preseason here uh so let me know your thoughts in the comments uh thank you very much for watching if you have any predictions too, drop those uh, enjoy thursday enjoy free agency and i will be back